Meet Dr. David Sinclair. He's a professor at Harvard Medical School. That is him, like back in 44 years old in 2013. But that is him, like 55 years old. And he is kind of looks younger to me. Over the years, professor says that he, the way that he is, really help him and his body is much younger. I looked at my blood biochemistry and I'm actually now younger and healthier than I've ever been. Testosterone, glucose, inflammation, blood cell composition. For most of those markers, I'm better than a 20 year old for, for health. In this video, we will take you into five foods that really Dr. Sinclair eats and really it helps him, his body, to get healthier and younger. By living a healthy life, you can slow that rate of aging and prevent this, this corruption of the body software and even reboot it. The first is exercising, which helps you longevity. Second, most important eating habits to longevity. Third, the food he eats for longevity or the supplements he takes daily. Lastly, the food he avoids for longevity. The next thing which Dr. Sinclair really emphasizes is exercising. Dr. Sinclair is saying that you have to at least three days a week do exercises, which really helps you get your body healthier. To exercise three times a week um, and lose my breath. You want to be able to be moving so fast that you cannot carry out a conversation easily. That's when you know you're becoming hypoxic, low in oxygen. And this low oxygen, we think, is a very good stimulator of this stress on the body. And it, your body responds in a positive way to build muscle, get better blood flow, and also your tissues will put out chemicals that slow aging. So really, if you can just lose your breath for 10 minutes, three times a week, that can give remarkable health benefits, lowering the rates of disease by 30%. The next part with Dr. Sinclair really emphasizes eating. Dr. Sinclair says that you have to eat in less amount but in different meals, like five or six times a day. Eat less often. It's not just what you eat, it's also when you eat. And this constant eating three meals a day plus snacks is making us age faster than we need to. I like to eat within a period of about six hours a day. Over time, learned to do is skip meals. I'm not always successful. Sometimes I have breakfast in, in beautiful places, but my goal is to not eat a large meal until dinner. Uh, and then I eat a very healthy vegan meal. What is Dr. Sinclair eats during the six hour, which really helps him? If you're down to one meal a day, which I am now, you shed weight and then you get your 20 year old body back. That's a nice bonus. It's the period of not eating that's so important for boosting the body's defenses against aging to maximize longevity. But these long extended periods are doing a real deep cleanse on the body and turning on that autophagy, that process of recycling proteins very deeply. There is a set of genes that I wrote about in, in my book, Lifespan, that's called the sirtuins. And they get turned on when there's not enough energy in the body. So if you don't have a lot of sugar in your bloodstream or a lot of protein, they will get turned on and they defend the body against the damage that causes the aging. So is it any plan that you really focus on is, is a stress plan, which Dr. Singler says that a stress plan is really enemy of your body, which really kills every good cells or every good or habits in your body. It will keep you in depression or keep you away from all your good habits. The trick is that you want to fill your body with fluids. For me, mm -hmm. constant coffee, tea, hot water, all the way through the day, being hydrated and filled with liquid takes away any feeling of hunger. Also nuts. If you really are really, you need to eat something, a bit of protein is known to take away the feeling of hunger rapidly. You want to have at least 16 hours of not eating or not eating very much. And then you can have eight hours. So typically that means having a late lunch if you skip breakfast or if you prefer to skip dinner. Uh, skip that. But that gives my body this long window, more than 20 hours of not having glucose circulating from the external world. Now, what happens when you do that, and it takes a few weeks for your body to adapt, is that your liver will learn how to compensate for lack of food. It's called gluconeogenesis, the generation of glucose from your liver. It actually overcomes the feeling of hunger. Do it for at least two weeks, because after the two week, especially by the three week mark, your liver has now learned that you're not gonna have breakfast or lunch and it will start making glucose at a steady level. That's really important because it's known that if you have these spikes of glucose, it leads to hunger when it crashes after a big meal. You know what? Exercising that really helps Dr. Sinclair is there is also a stress plan 
which Dr. Singler eats it, and that is called green tea. Dr. Singler really drinks green tea, and he really emphasizes that it really helps. I drink matcha tea most mornings, which is the, the very thick, dark green, creamy green tea. ECGC from green tea. This ECGC has great anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer properties. I went almost completely to plants, and my body has responded. I look better. I think my skin is better. I feel better. My memory is certainly better. You just look at those populations and people that live a long time, they are generally smaller yeah. women who yeah. don't eat much, who eat vegetarian. I mean, that's the fact. While he enjoys really eating leafy greens, he's emphasizing on spinach, which has a lot of items and helpful for body. It's definitely full of leafy greens. Particularly spinach is great because it's got the iron that we need, plenty of vitamins, a lot of olive oil with oleic acid, which activates sirtuins as well. The Mediterranean diet is the one that I think is likely to be the, most, the easiest to do in the Western world and to have the biggest bang for the buck. Just remember, <laughs> eat, if your food is stressed, then you get the benefits. Stress your food so you don't have to. And so what we focus on are plants that are full of color. So try to eat bright red and purple, uh, dark green colored vegetables, because those are the ones that have these polyphenols that can turn on the body's defenses. And actually in my lab, if we give polyphenols to mice, they actually get healthier and run further like they've been exercising. This was all the food that we should really take them or eat them. But now let's jump into the food that we should avoid it and should not eat it. First of first is sugar, which re is really a disease or an enemy of your longevity. It, it really causes a, mm, bad damages to your body, which Dr. Sinclair says that you have to avoid it. Or if you can, you should never eat sugar. The big killer is sugar. Glucose, particularly fructose, is also pernicious. And if you give animals lots of glucose, and especially fructose, they will get fatty liver disease, they'll get diabetes. It's really bad. The best predictor of your long-term longevity that we know of is your blood sugar. When you've got high blood sugar, it attaches to a lot of proteins in your body. You become caramelized. Cancer cells, by the way, love sugar. They live on sugar. And that's another reason why you should try to keep it low. Try to avoid too much fruit, berries, particularly fruit juice. Definitely avoid that sugar high. Spiking your sugar is not healthy in the long run. Your body can make its own sugar. Your liver makes sugar. You just need to wait two weeks for it to get used to it. Our liver is pretty lazy, but after two weeks it learns, ah, in the morning I have to make some sugar. And what, what I found is that my liver making sugar is a lot smarter than my eyes and my mouth eating sugar. There's even an order which you can eat your meals to reduce the blood sugar spike. You can put the sugar at the end of the meal. You can quit something, but you don't have to be draconian about it. I still like to steal a, little, you know, a few scoops of ice cream if I see it, but I'm not gonna eat a giant bowl of ice cream every night. Top four foods Dr. Sinclair does not eat. First thing I cut out was a lot of carbohydrates. I used to eat bread every day. I would just put, if I ate something, it would be on toast. Okay, that, that's my life. I cut that out and I found immediate improvements in my biochemistry levels, particularly my glucose levels. Is that if you eat a piece of toast for breakfast or, or heaven forbid, a, a giant glass of orange juice, you'll have this spike in sugar and you'll feel great. But then you, your body will put out too much insulin and suck that glucose out of your bloodstream and put you into a glucose deficit, and that's hypoglycemia. And then you're hungry, you've got ghrelin coming out into your body and you, you feel hungry and you need to eat something. I'm at a state though now where I don't get those rises and crashes. My liver is putting out glucose from when I wake up till dinner and I've never been so focused. I've never been so um, brain fog free. Because the, these crashes, what they do is they make you feel shaky or tired and brain fog. And I wish I'd done this in my 20s and done it my whole life because I've really never felt better because of it. The next thing I cut out was meat. And that improved my numbers even better. Cholesterol, triglycerides all came down. And I have a familial history, genetics of heart disease. And it's not just the protein. It's also the fat that comes along with the steak and whatever that I was eating. Well, I love meat. I would love to eat meat. They taste, it tastes really good. It's just the science says plants give you better bang for the buck for longevity than meat protein that's in plants is actually has a ratio of amino acids that stimulates these longevity genes, the sirtuins, and another one called mTOR. And if you always eat meat every meal, 
your body's just not fighting aging the way it could if you ate more plants. I mean, you can eat meat occasionally. Fish, for example, has a lot of great omega-3 fatty acids. So I'm not against meat. I just think try to focus more on plants if you can. Third change was the dairy. I did that just to see what would happen. I figured it wouldn't matter. I'm not allergic to dairy. I'm not lactose intolerant. But it did have an effect. It made things even better. And what I think is going on, Shane, is that I was eating a large amount of protein, not just fat, but eggs and all that stuff. And now that I have less protein, I think that mTOR pathway that's really important for longevity um, in animals and probably people is really kicking in in a way that had never done so before. The new research just over the last two years says that drinking alcohol every day is, is really not good for you. So I've cut out alcohol and I've focused on plants. 